All right, Brambro back with some Grand Tactician Civil War, our Union campaign on Very Hard, Very High. Uh, I haven't loaded into the campaign yet because um, at the time that I am recording this, the development 1.06, uh, you know, basically a beta version of 1.06, uh, just came out, uh, I think, a couple days ago, and I have not uh, loaded it yet. Well, in this campaign, I have not loaded it yet. I have loaded it now. Um, but by the time you're seeing this video, it will have been uh, several days, maybe as much as a, a week or so. But I uh, just wanted to open the... Uh, initial menu field book just to get the summary here of what's in 1.06 should be here yeah 1.06 beta main changes rebalance the economy makes blockade and trade war more effective can now construct some economy and military buildings uh, I think primarily uh, hospitals We'll, we'll see when we get into the game. Added some projects. Changed the way subsidies work. They're now generated and can be spent by the player for activating projects. Or for building those buildings. Uh, I guess they've kind of reorganized the lists so that maybe the garrisons aren't clogging up the military panel. We'll see in a moment. And the way weapon production works. A new weapons tab in military management. And we can actually order specific types of weapons to be produced or imported. I think that's a good improvement. Various AI improvements. We'll see how that goes. Uh, and a number of rebalancing and bug fixes. Um, there's a dev post on Steam that lists a whole bunch of things. I will mention there's a couple of bugs that I have mentioned in campaign episodes before. One of them is the Mexico policy for the CSA that just com completely trashes all the CSA's uh, volunteer manpower instead of only the uh, state of Texas volunteer manpower. Uh, that is explicitly mentioned as having been corrected here. And then the other one is constructed parapets fortifications, um, which the regular tier one parapets work just fine. But if you upgraded them, <laughs> at least up till now, uh, you know, you'd have the devil's own time getting your guys to actually get in them and take cover. And, uh, you know, upgraded parapets were the equivalent of having your troops standing in an open field. Supposedly, that has been corrected as well. I hope so. All right. Just a quick summary there. And at the time that this video was published, probably everybody knows this and has played with it already. But anyway, now let's get into the campaign. Load the game up. This is supposed to be save game compatible, and I've seen already a couple of uh, videos on YouTube that, you know, at least the campaign will work. I, the economy may get kind of jacked up a little bit, and the AI may start acting different. But I think we're at a stage in this campaign where it shouldn't cause too many problems. I would probably not be doing this, uh, like toward the beginning or even the middle stages of a campaign. Okay. All right, so this list over here already looks pretty different. It's a little bit more uh, compact, I guess the army list and then yeah there is a separate garrison tab here okay so this is the list they were talking about not up here in military management so we can actually see all of our that'll probably get uh, we'll see if that's useful or not fleets okay 
Kind of shows the flagship of each one. I don't think I don't remember if it did that before. It may have. And then I think there's some new uh, overview heat maps. We've got uh, so it went down to supply before available capital. That may actually need to run a little bit. Not paused. No. Okay, well. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really seeing any difference there. Transport bottle, okay. Transport bottlenecks. Well, something flashed there for a moment, but no longer visible. Medical. Shortages and oversupply. Shows the most important regional product shortages and oversupply. In shortages in red, oversupply in green. I'm not seeing it. I'm seeing, it. I'm seeing a lot of green. Oh, there's a little bit of red right here in my territory. And unlike some of the other maps, it actually, well, oh, I took it out of that view when I scrolled in too far. So it looks like a shortage of wood near, I think that's Columbus, Kentucky. I think my initial res I think my initial reaction to that is kind of like the economy before. Okay, so I know that. How exactly do I use that information? Looks like a shortage of crops over here in northern uh, Virginia. A shortage of crops in Delaware. A shortage of crops in New Jersey. And up in New England. Well, that sounds bad. Production and demand. Ooh. Green for production, red for demand. A lot of demand for food. And can, well, there's a lot of demand for food everywhere. That, uh, now, I guess that doesn't necessarily mean that that demand isn't being met. It just means there's a lot of demand. And we don't get data for the, conf the areas under Confederate control, it would appear. So this is specifically Union demand, I think. Yeah, high production of iron in Tennessee, and therefore, logically enough, a high demand for iron ore. But I'm right back to okay. How do I how do I transpose that into something actionable? Bunch of fertility maps, kind of showing okay. Here's where they grow cotton. Here's where you grow crops. Uh, mostly areas kind of under Union control, and it kind of highlights the importance of uh, Northern Virginia, the Shenandoah Valley to the Confederacy. Of course they get a lot of rice from this lower Atlantic coast. Sugar down in Louisiana, that makes sense. And the Gulf Coast of Texas, sure. Big tobacco areas in Virginia and North Carolina, yup. I didn't know this was a... and I don't know if this is historical or not, it's just game stuff. But if this seems historical here, I did not know that, uh, if it is historical, I didn't know that Western Kentucky and Tennessee was a big tobacco area. And yeah, I mean, the entire Eastern United States is pretty much one big forest if it were left alone. So uh, that makes sense. Okay. 
How about these buildings they were talking about? Federal buildings. We can apparently build hospitals, markets, news agencies, prison camps, military academies. Banks. Looks like banks and military academies are grayed out and we cannot build those. Um, so those maybe require some of those projects that were mentioned in the patch notes. We can, however, build a hospital. Now, do I put a specific hospital somewhere, or is this kind of like building hospital capacity? Let's find out. Let's, uh, let's see if we can build a hospital, say, somewhere in Kentucky. Okay, so that is apparently a decision to build hospital capacity. Not a specific building somewhere on the map. As far as I can tell, I could be messing all this up. But we also have... Company applications. Private companies can be attracted if, if enough subsidies in the relevant branch were spent. Okay, so basically this is a more detailed, level down form of the industrial subsidy in that you can target specific types. That's cool. Some are green, some are not green. That would seem to imply that we've got enough money to load up on some farms, but maybe not brickworks. However, I do have construction options available for all these. Okay, so then that answers my question. Then on the previous map, the heat map where I said, okay, so how do I transfer this into uh, an actual decision? Well, here's that decision. If I feel like I need more iron ore, then, uh, well, that would be a mine, right? I don't see mine. But if I need more iron, then I would click on boundary. And again, is this a specific building or is this just Yeah, okay, so it's not letting me build that. So something I have to do in somewhere up here before I can actually subsidize another foundry. It is giving me green on farms though. Let's see if Nope, same thing. So I may actually have to activate a project or something before I can do any of these. Just the fact that the button isn't grayed out doesn't mean I can actually build it. Or maybe just the red means building. I don't know. Okay, how about this railroad thing? Okay, so this is the same old... Uh, railroad map from before. They've simply moved where it lives. Okay. Speaking of which, earlier in this campaign, we came down, took Knoxville, and started building this Cumberland Gap Railroad from Lexington down to Knoxville. That was on... I actually made a little sticky note so I wouldn't forget. That was on 25 March. So April, May, June... July. It's been a little over four months since we initiated construction of that railroad and it is now 64% complete. Okay, so it should be complete in about seven months total for basically kind of an average sized 
railroad at four nodes, four stops, four major stops anyway. I mean, some are smaller, some are much bigger. I would assume that, you know, if we, like this uh, New York and Providence with something like 10 stops, that might have taken longer. But maybe one of these little two-stop jobs might take shorter. Okay, so that's that's good to know. And that's not a 1.06 thing. <laughs> that's just, you know, railroad construction has been in this game. <clears throat> I just never... I think built one from scratch. Okay. Let's have a look and see what's different in the finance screen. Well, the first thing that jumps out at me is that the subsidy levels at max are much higher. I don't remember what the numbers were, but I am pretty sure that industry at, tw at, at very high and I think I'm at industrialization three in this campaign. Pretty sure it wasn't 20 million. And everything all together, I am now up uh, 47 million I'm spending in subsidies. Whereas before I loaded in this beta in this campaign, I doubt it was much higher than perhaps 12, maybe 15, at most, maybe even lower than that. So that's actually a good thing, I think. And that, you know, there may be trade-offs now where you just don't automatically peg everything all the way right at campaign start and never look at it again. Which was kind of what the situation was before. That said, I'm not changing anything. <clears throat> On the other hand, look at this crap up here. We're actually running a surplus, which I am 99.99999% sure I have never seen in this game before. You're almost always running a deficit and having to rely on deficit spending, and that's why the credit rating was so important. Because it simply wasn't possible to fund the war through revenue alone. Never has been. Was never designed to it. Now, apparently, maybe you can. Or it just could be completely thrown off because I'm changing versions in the middle of a campaign. So, you know, <laughs> caveat emptor there. Or maybe we'll hit the, you know, maybe as soon as we hit the end of August and it actually does the economic update, you know, the monthly economic report, maybe this will all change radically. And certainly any historical data we see in the graph should not. That's all hugely suspect. Even more than it was before. Okay. And then... Uh, so that's finances. Policies, I, I don't think they messed with this. At least not with this particular screen. Some of their effects may change, necessarily. Projects. So this is new. Wow, there's a lot here. A whole bunch of civil and a whole bunch of military projects. Most... Okay. Sure would be nice to know what these color codes mean. A lot of these are kind of brown or grayish, grayish brown. Then there's some blue ones. Looks like they're all blue or brown on the military side, but I'm seeing some green, some yellow, some kind of purplish. I don't know what these color codes mean. A 
adjust the related subsidy slider in finances to change the speed of funding. Okay, so this is currently... I'm kind of guessing green is probably fastest. Okay. Oh, it, it tells you a funding of 250k agriculture is needed to do this, which in our agriculture, we're up to 5 million on very high with two bread baskets researched. Corn is king, 250k counter propaganda. That needs a funding of 1 million in politics. Which it says 2 million, however. Oh, the color coding is just the type. Agriculture is green, economy is yellow. Okay. So this is, okay, this just tells you that, uh, all right, it's not a level, it's, it's a category. And that's why these are all only brown or blue. Blue would be Diplo, Austrian rifles, Brit artillery, Brit rifles. And, mil you know, and mil okay, that makes sense. So I guess it's not just policies anymore, but you need actual specific projects. Like before, you do Industry 1, and then you can build ironclad monitors. But this kind of looks like you need Industry 1, or maybe you don't need Industry 1. Maybe this is the new way that these things are gated. But I have to complete this project before I can build ironclad monitors, is how I would... Uh, interpret that. What I would like to see is it here? Okay, you click it and it tells you what it does. Finance the logistical effort of selling crops to Europe. Okay, so does this then replace the policy that did this? I mean, that's what Breadbasket and, uh, and there was a Feed Europe. Yeah. Okay, so, th so what that described is basically the same thing that this policy does. And this policy is still here. Or maybe it's two different ways to get at the same result. Pretty interesting. Either way. Okay. Well, I've jabbered on a little bit about that. What is going on in the campaign? In our last episode, we fought a fairly big battle here at Charlottesville and the Army of the Northwest and the Army of the Shenandoah and the, whatever this other army is, Army of the Potomac. All three of them were in that battle. Army of the Shenandoah was not heavily engaged. They engaged our cavalry a little bit. And... <laughs> And George Custer got defamed in the course of that. But that kind of inflated the numbers enough that we didn't quite get to the uh, casualty percentage. Th these two corps got mauled pretty good. But Johnston's numbers kind of kept them from crossing that major victory threshold. Hooker is moving down to Stanton, which... As soon as that army, uh, that battle ended and these armies went into retreat mode, 
Stanton flipped to blue. I guess because of the proximity of Hooker. If there were no armies around, I think it would still be Confederate because I'm pretty... I don't know if Stanton is controlled from Richmond or from Lynchburg. Lynchburg's a little closer. But then the... In any case, they can't retreat to Stanton, and they're continuing on down or up the valley. They may actually be going as far as uh, Danville. That might be their closest infrastructure point. They're not going here. They're not going to Salem. If there were a supply depot at Lynchburg, I think they could retreat to that. Because I believe supply depots count is okay this bridge at Lynchburg is an IIP so they may be retreating here they may be retreating to Lynchburg after all not Lynchburg itself but this IIP right next to it Meanwhile, we have a siege going on down here at Fort Macon, which uh, is somewhat in our favor, not by a huge amount. Not high enough where I want to assault. This is a fair, this is a smaller than, nor it's not tiny but it is a smaller than normal core and this is a bigger than normal garrison with more firepower I'm not 100% sure assault will carry the day there on the other hand I'm not sure it won't what's the worst that can happen army of the Atlantic has to retreat somewhere okay yeah, screw it I'm assaulting uh -huh. Turn on my telegraph and supply. See how Grant is doing on getting his supply situation. Uh, he's he's getting there. Third Corps is kind of looking uh, okay again. Green readiness. Oh wait a minute. What are these exclamate economy alarms? Cost of pre goods for this company are approximately one. Y'all can read it as well as I can. Especially. Man, that's that's quite a Walla O text uh, tooltip there. <laughs> Try to build companies that increase pre goods supply. I guess that means like raw materials, iron ore, uh, as opposed to iron. and try to increase transport capacity in, the, in this area by constructing markets or railroads. Should be okay on railroads. But how do I construct Okay, this important IP could trade approximately 193% more goods if enough transport capacity were available. Build markets and construct railroads nearby to increase transport. Higher trade revenues increase sales tax revenues. Maybe that's why we're seeing such higher uh, revenues and fine, you know, tariffs and sales taxes. Maybe that is coming from basically the the new trade system in 1.06. Okay. 
And then how does one build a market? Oh, there, it is a specific building. And unlike supply depots, apparently that is instant. Market constructed. Of course, I spent a million dollars doing that. Oh, no. It, it, it said constructed. It's not. There is a time lag. But then the, another question is, can you do that anywhere? Or does it have to, you know... I, I, I can't imagine that an army has to go around building markets and stuff. Let's see if we can build one somewhere not in. Let's build one up here at Nashville and just see if that... Yeah, okay, you don't need an army to build them. Which makes sense, that would be silly. And there you go. Market being constructed ready in 19 days. Okay, so then that brings me back to... I thought I couldn't build a hospital. Uh, apparently that was not true. So let's take a little bit... Uh... Yeah, it was just so small. I didn't really register that. hospital being constructed ready in 28 days but then what is the effect I guess once it's built maybe we can click on it and see like an area of effect around it kind of like it's it's equivalent of a command radius around an army and if armies are within that radius, then they uh, either suffer lower attrition or recover their uh, casualties faster. That would seem to make sense. And then that, that would also explain why I didn't see any thing on the medical care heat map because I don't have any hospitals. So once, you know, say that thing gets uh, completed, then we go back to that heat map, then uh, we'll see some little blue tick or something. Okay, well, I'm not going to go around and try to fix my economy and everything running around the map, building 30 hospitals and 50 more. I'm not doing that. But yeah, that definitely is... It's becoming clear that's a pretty major change to the economic side of this game. Because it used to be kind of fire and forget, set your subsidy levels, set your tax levels, and don't touch them again, and there just wasn't much to do with the economy after that. Ooh, now there is. Now there's a lot. Okay, so... Provide medical care to soldiers wounded in combat. Reduce mortality of wounded soldiers, which in turn reduces loss of support due to casualties. Okay, that makes sense. News agencies probably kind of like that embedded uh, reporter perk for the army. Guys will get fame. Oh, also, new source for military intelligence gathering. That sounds tasty. All I can tell. And that makes sense, which, you know, here I go on one of my... One of the things that always strikes me when reading about this conflict is kind of the intelligence and the information picture. It was really pretty amazing. I, I, don't, I mean, of course, there was espionage going on, but there was a whole bunch of stuff they just didn't need to do espionage for. <laughs> Yeah, they didn't need to interrogate prisoners, for example. 
You just ask them, hey, what unit you're with? And they'll, you know, they'll tell you. They'll boast about it. <laughs> you know, under whose division were you in? Were you, were you, uh, on in, were you at Antietam? Were you on the left or right? Where was your unit? You know, and they'll tell you everything you wanted to know and more. You know. <laughs> so how close is Lee's army? He's right over that hill and he's going to come kick your butt. <laughs> and I'm going to laugh when he does it. And, 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 you know, if Lee wants to uh, send a message, you know, communicate something to Meade or Grant, all he has to do is write a letter and go drop it in the mailbox. It'll get there. <laughs> They're reading each other's newspapers all the time. And it's, you know, so like kind of the open, normal information, open source, just contained all kinds of crap that in a later era, you know, including today, would be considered classified information. All right, enough of that. Prison camp, what does that do? Okay, so when we capture enemy soldiers, field commanders have the choice now of paroling them or sending them to POW camps. Which I guess means you need to have a POW camp to do that. Paroled soldiers very often return to their units and continue fighting. And then they don't if they are POWs. Okay, so that makes sense. However... In fighting the tactical battles of these in this game, very, very few soldiers seem to wind up captured. Now, maybe they've tweaked that aspect in the tactical battles, in which case this would make sense. But if it's the same old, same old, for that mechanic in the tactical battles... I'm not sold that this is very useful. Because I, I, and I, I mean, y'all have seen me do it from time to time. So, what, what I, one typically sees is that once a unit fully routes in a tactical battle, your guys really don't do much to it. They don't shout. I mean, they don't shoot at it. You can order them to shoot at it, but they won't. <laughs> They'll move like they're going to, but then they don't actually fire. And I've tried charging them to make the whole unit surrender. That doesn't seem to do squat. Uh, so I've just stopped really paying attention to fully routed units on the map. Maybe now there's a reason to pay more attention to routed units and try to capture more of them. If they've kind of enabled mechanics that make that uh, more realistic to do. Okay, we already learned what market did and increases transport capacity. What does the bank do? Okay, that's why that available capital map was blank because there's no banks. So those provide capital which increase private wealth. Which should then result in increased income taxes, once that gets implemented, and lowers the construction costs of companies. Okay. And national funding becomes cheaper, so it, it helps with the deficit spending interest rate, I guess. But why can't I build one? Ah, yeah. Okay, so you need the Bank Act policy for that. Makes sense. I'm guessing Military Academy has something to do with military experience. All officers with a Military Academy in their home state benefit from the improved military education and culture, improves commander attributes, and prepares them to war time command. All right, so I guess they start either start with more stars in uh, you know leadership and cunning and stuff, or 
they develop those stars more quickly or individual officers ceilings on those attributes on those attributes may be bumped up or all of the above <laughs> so that seems worth doing and it looks like so this kind of sounds like you want to put a military academy only one needed apparently per state or at very least your most pop your more populated ones where more of your officers come from like I may not care about putting a military academy in Kansas, but I definitely want one in states like New York, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Massachusetts. Massachusetts is a decent population state for manpower, but even more so, it seems like a ton of freaking uh, officers um, come from Massachusetts. Okay, and I went down the patch note rabbit hole there again. That's, I don't know if I'm going to get any battles or anything productive <laughs> done during this episode or not. <clears throat> okay, now this fella, he was in supply before, and now under 1.06, he is not. Oh, he's down to 43%. He's building a supply depot for, which was what he came down here to do. Preparing for Grant's move south. Now I've got a supply depot here. Seventh Corps, which is getting supply from two sources, is still only at 57%. That sounds problematic. And I literally don't know what else to do about that, given that I've already built a supply depot specifically for him. However, it only recently completed, therefore it hasn't stocked up yet, and it's at zero for provisions. So he is getting supply from here, but he is not getting provisions, because there's none to give him. Or at very least, whatever provisions that the depot gets, all of it gets immediately forwarded, and there's not enough. And that's why stocks aren't rising. Well, guess what? I think we've learned what... A possible remedy for that is market time. Looks like we need a market here at Decatur. Which will take 19 days to build. Okay, so where I left off on the last episode, McClellan's army, which is primarily, well, not primarily, is the 4th Corps, is in Atlanta and for some reason is not capturing Atlanta, and I don't know why. I'm nine, and he's having supply problems too, partially because. He is not uh, capturing the city, therefore this depot is still considered Confederate. So he's not drawing from it. Which was the idea of him coming down here to Atlanta. I do have him building a supply depot. But he shouldn't have to. And I'm confused on why this capture isn't happening. I don't know if that's a glitch or if there's something going on. Oh, there's also a new little tab up here. Economy alerts. And there's a there's a buttload of them that I'm not going to try to digest at the moment. A lot of shortages. <laughs> a lot of ineffective companies. Okay. That looks like a good place to capture. I wasn't even trying to do that. Moving down here, but... 
It's a three pip uh, factory. Is it possible that he's not capturing because he's in scout mode? I've used scout mode a lot. I don't think that's a factor, but I'm going to take it off just in case. No, that didn't do it. He is consider he's not sitting in the river. We just move it a little mo just move him a little bit. Maybe that'll jog it into <laughs> jog it into action. There it goes. Okay, it's registered now. Atlanta's being captured. Good good stuff. Which means that the supply depot may actually be superfluous now, since this one should flip. Sometimes, though, the Confederacy can burn down a supply depot in situations like this. So I'm going to keep building this one here. Let's go see how our siege is doing. Assault doesn't really seem to speed up sieges any. I'm not convinced it's really worth doing. Technically, the Army HQ is still on uh, embarked. But for that matter, it looks like 8th Corps is as well. That might be screwing up this siege a little bit. If they're considered embarked. Oh! Looks like we've got a fight! Second core which for some reason is down to about twenty two thousand men. I do not understand that. And only forty one guns. Interesting. Okay, so over here on the right, first corps, 23,000 men. Second corps, 23,000 men. First corps didn't even fight in that last battle, so they have taken zero casualties recently. And second corps certainly didn't take seven to 8,000 casualties in that battle. Not even close. And why are the gun numbers so low? Oh wait, that's for core. Yeah, okay, that, that makes sense. So my first question is, why are these cores so much lower than they were before? Sixth core, not affected. 31,000 looks about right. But my first question is, why are the numbers so low? And my second question is, why is second core not being reinforced by sixth core? Oh, right, because I had ordered First Corps by itself to run down here and grab Lynchburg. And apparent, he should still be within the command radius of the Army HQ. Where is, okay. Now, the army, the Shenandoah, okay, uh, 13,000 looks about right for what they should be, and so does this. I don't know where I lost men. 
unless it were did I have a bunch of enlistments expire I don't know bottom line I don't know if there's something that occurred with enlistments that would have occurred anyway in 1.05 or is there some kind of new 1.06 mechanic that has caused this either way we still got 23,000 men confederacy's got I, we're gonna fight the battle either way <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Johnny Reb. Do your worst, Beauregard. So when I cut out there for the battle, I did not realize that uh, the episode had already gone almost an hour. So uh, I'm basically cutting off the episode here. And episode 19 will be the Battle of Lynchburg that we... Uh, just entered and, and I'll post them I'll, I'll schedule them for posting uh, on the same day not too far apart so anyway that will do for this particular episode uh, as I dawdled my way through myself seeing uh, 1.06 for the first time in one of my own games um, keep in mind I'm recording this at the time that uh, this video is posted I will have uh, recorded it, you know, over a little over a week ago, probably. <laughs> uh, at any rate, if you like what I'm doing um, and want to see yet more GTCW um, and other games uh, on my channel, leave a like, leave a comment, dare I say, perhaps even a subscribe. At any rate, thank you very, very much for watching. Thank you.